Welcome to TMI. Just Plain Stupid, Part 1. Commando. A man was shopping in the meat aisle at Walmart on November 27, 2018 in Arizona. During the trip, he accidentally shot his own sausage. Since carrying a gun in Arizona is legal without a permit, the man felt free to wear his Peace Commando style, that is, unholstered and under his waistband. His gun began to slide down his jeans, so he repositioned the weapon and reached in to pull it out. He accidentally pulled the trigger instead. The rest is history. Home protection. One Thanksgiving evening in Maine on November 28, 2019, a 65-year-old man was shot and killed in a small rural town. Following an investigation, it was established that he was the shooter. The man was a do-it-yourselfer and decided to find a way to safeguard his family's valuables. The man rigged a handgun trigger to pull when the door was opened by intruders, recalling his childhood when a loose tooth was tied to a doorknob and he was told by his father, when I slam this door, that tooth will shoot out of your mouth like a bullet. The property was equipped with booby traps, including this one. Just think of the damage that could occur to an uninvited visitor at this main home. The homeowner himself accidentally set off the jury-rigged home protection device and it killed him, sparing uninvolved persons from injury. Fatal Drive Becca Campbell's fatality is an awful paradox. While riding in a car with her boyfriend in downtown St. Louis, Missouri, she playfully sported a weapon and said loudly, we're ready for Ferguson. Her boyfriend normally ducked, causing the car to crash, and the impact resulted in the gun firing fatally striking Campbell in the head. The pair had actually acquired the weapon just days prior to the Ferguson Grand Court decision, allegedly to shield themselves from possible civil discontent. Death at the Movies In March of 2018, a Birmingham man attending a movie had a fatal heart attack after getting his head trapped under an electric footrest while trying to pick up his phone off the ground. He passed away six days later. Be careful where you charge your phone. Using an iPhone while charging is not a good idea. A man in England on December 11, 2016, found out the hard way. That day, the man was using his iPhone in his bathtub while charging by plugging it in with an extension cord. Placing the device on his chest, the extension cord dropped into the water. He suffered severe burns on his arm, hand, and chest, although this didn't really matter because he was already dead from heart failure. Smoking Kills In April 2018, a German woman was in the hospital when her oxygen ventilator caught fire and burned the plastic upholstery of her wheelchair. The 71-year-old woman who was smoking outside a hospital died from third-degree burns. Bedhead. On September 23, 2016, a woman from Virginia had just had a curbside treasure, a king-sized mattress. She attempted to hold the mattress to the top of her van using her body weight. To make matters worse, her friend was driving the moving vehicle. Unfortunately, she fell off the top of the vehicle. The mattress survived. Stoned. With its ambitious stone ridges, bridges, moats, and monuments, Opus 40 is sometimes compared to Stonehenge. Harvey Fite built this magnificent site. Dry stack stone masonry is a tried and true method that lasts. It's the way the arches of Rome are suspended. Just a few years from finishing the walls, stairways, ramps, serene pools, dark moats, and underground passageways of his dreams, Mr. Fight passed away at the age of 72. Harvey fell into the quarry after he wandered out onto a precipice while operating a lawnmower. And then, without warning, he was dead. On the plus side, this artist died in the place he loved and loved to live. Not a normal pool. Tragic events occurred on July 17, 2014, when seven people unintentionally drowned in a cesspool, one after another in a small town in Poland. 
The first fatality involved a workman whose job it was to empty the septic tank on a hog farm into a slurry tank fastened to a tractor. The man lost consciousness and died from extremely toxic hydrogen sulfide fumes falling into the tank. Six others followed him, each of them going to the aid of the ones who had come before them before passing out and drowning in the muck. With the help of emergency personnel, an additional individual managed to survive. Ring around the... On day in May of 2014, English firefighters were called to the emergency room in a hospital in London to help remove a ring from a very touchy part of a patient. A ring of titanium was around the patient's private parts, which were swollen and purple in color. Since the ring was titanium, the bolt cutters that were normally successful for gold and silver rings on fingers, it made it impossible to remove the ring. By the time the man entered the hospital, things had gotten out of hand. No pun intended. It's unknown what further treatment he received. Rocky Treasure After reading a book by Forrest Fenn, a man learned about a hidden treasure. The claim made by the author was that he buried $2 million worth of gold coins and other artifacts somewhere in the Rocky Mountains. He provided clues to the reader throughout the book, including nine poetry verses that allude to the secret location. For the man, temptation was too great. Even though no one knew if anyone had located the buried box, even though 350,000 other people were searching for it. Already, four men lost their lives trying. Based on his interpretation of the clues, he was sure of where the treasure was buried. As a result, he convinced a 65-year-old acquaintance to join him on a treasure hunt, and their quest for rapid riches got underway. They traveled to the Dinosaur National Monument near the Colorado, Utah, because he was sure he knew where the treasure was. He and his colleague didn't prepare for an overnight stay in the mountains, presumably thinking that if they left early enough, they would return home by dusk with an extra $2 million. They were mistaken though. They became disoriented and did not discover any treasure. For Michael and his friend, the future appeared bleak. They were hungry, cold, and lost. They were nearly dead and shivering when a search and rescue team discovered them and brought them down the mountain. Michael did not learn his lesson. After healing enough, he decided to give it another go a month later. Again, he convinced his 65-year-old co-worker to accompany him because treasure. They knew they would find it this time. Dinosaur National Monument had been closed intermittently due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Hikers were advised to avoid challenging terrain to ensure the safety of first responders in quarantine. But Michael was unfazed by that. He packed up and left Denver on Tuesday, March 17th, carrying only the clothes on his back, a copy of Fenn's book, two bottles of water, and a few candy bars. The two men loaded their rented snowmobiles onto the bed of their pickup truck and drove it just outside the park. The rental agent wondered how long the pair would last before they returned the vehicles. When the men didn't return after dark, the company notified the local authorities. The rescue got underway on Friday the 20th, early in the morning. The searchers discovered Michael's truck. They also discovered the abandoned snowmobiles on Saturday morning and discovered that Michael and his friend had foolishly continued on foot. The two men were discovered on Saturday afternoon approximately one mile away from the snowmobiles, almost exactly where the previous rescue had taken place a month prior. After being carried back down the mountain, Michael was placed inside a body bag. His friend, who barely made it out of their ordeal, still won't talk about it. The author, Forrest Finn, himself announced that the treasure had finally been found in June 2020 but disclose no additional information. Several lawsuits have been filed against Fenn since his veracity has been questioned. There are those who believe that the treasure, if any, is made up of artifacts that Fenn stole. Regardless of whether the story is true or not, people will probably keep searching for the rumored treasure. Resurrection. In Pakistan on September 17, 2014, 
a naive acolyte offered to be killed and raised up by a holy man. However, the holy man was not an accomplished practitioner of the ritual. Rather, he was a novice who decided to give it a try. The holy man, a well-known Sufi, had been working miracles in a small village for five years. He was confident that he was now prepared to up the ante to a full resurrection. The Sufi announced to his disciples that he wished to murder and resurrect a virtuous man. The Sufi appeared to be arranging things so as to bring back a person back from the dead. The acolyte volunteered to be killed the very next day. On the day of the resurrection, the follower was killed. The day after the overly optimistic Sufi was behind bars for murder. Do you have any stories of stupid people doing stupid things? Post them in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more content like this.